Hi, and welcome to the Black Wallet Show. My name is Jessica Sinclair, also known as the Lit MC, and I'll be your host. This show will inspire, this show will empower, and educate you to live your best life. We will bring resources, experts, and entrepreneurs to the show, so let's go. <laughs> Welcome to the Black Wallet Talk Show. My name is Jessica Sinclair and I am the Lit MC. I am extremely excited and honored to have today's guest, Mr. George C. Frazier, who has dedicated his life legacy to help black and brown to empower them to gain generational wealth. Today we are going to wow you, empower you with some amazing questions from Mr. George C. Frazier. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome George C. Frazier to today's show. In America, you're either excellent or you're invisible. Let me say that again. You're either excellent in this country or you're invisible. I'll focus on excellence and demonstrated excellence must be one of the top priorities for black people for the 21st century. With my own personal philosophies and things that I've been teaching and preaching for 40 years, I have invested my time, talent, and treasure, my wealth, back into the black community to improve the condition of our people. George, thank you so much for being today's guest. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. That's a beautiful smell that you have. It's 100 megawatts, and you've lit, you lit up my office. Thank you. So, George, you have dedicated your life to help persons understand how to gain generational wealth. My first question to you is why? Why are you living this life? Why do you care about the black and brown community to have access to generational wealth? That's a wonderful question. Uh, let me say it as succinctly as I can in a, in a little rant. Mm -hmm. uh, until black America puts black America first, black America will always be last. Black people should be putting black people first. I think to be black and beautiful means nothing in this world unless you're black and powerful. Mm. Uh, we cannot be black and proud and niggas too, okay? Ooh. White folks are planning for three generations and we're planning for Saturday night. Our goal is to win, not to look like we're winning. I would rather carry a plastic bag with $5,000 in it than to carry a $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag with $100 in, in it. You're just looking like you're winning. You ain't winning. Louis Vuitton is winning. Nike is winning. Gucci is winning. Armani is winning. It is interesting to me that the rich stay rich by pretending to be poor, and the poor stay poor while pretending to be rich. We have to change something. Wow. And I felt that 15, 20 years ago, and it begins with financial education, financial literacy. That is what I decided to focus a significant part of my life doing. All right. So it's very, very, very critical to me that we learn how to focus on and how to manage our money so that we could get over some of these broke ass habits that we have and the habits oh my that, gosh. that keep us broke. A, we don't talk about money. We don't talk about money at home. Yes. We don't talk about money in the black church. We don't talk about money in school. That is a bad habit. That is not the subject of our dinner table conversation. The subject out of our dinner conversation is what's going on with the real housewives of Atlanta, of which really no one should give a shit, right? Talk about it, George. Right. I mean, I mean, that is a very bad habit that we have. Absolutely. We have another habit is we we are addicted to instant gratification versus delayed gratification. In other words, we buy to impress people, right? Yeah. So uh, to assuage the self esteem and the, the low self esteem that we have about our blackness and about our woundedness. We make impulse purchases. We borrow on our credit cards. We have little or no emergency funds, right? These are things that are very bad habits that we need to solve. Somebody's got to focus on 
educating our people and focusing on changing those habits. Right. What is it? Right. Mm -hmm. So you said so many great things in this one question. The one thing that really stands out to me, George, is the education piece, right? Where does one go for the content that you're giving? If they're not tuning in right now to the Black Wallet Show, how would they know about a George C. Frazier? How would they know yeah. how to access this wealth that's there for everyone, but we don't know where, we don't know who? These are the questions, these are the reasons why we're bringing you to this show, George, if you will, because you have the content. George, where can we get the intel? Because we're okay. so generational behind it's not our fault. It's just a systematic thing. Talk to that's my right. viewers right now, George. Where can we get the information that's bite-sized, that's chewable? You know, they say the average person has a third grade um, education level. Let's talk about that. Half of the things, we don't even know what's being said. Talk to okay. me about that, George, um, right now. I know my, my energy is going a bit up because these are the things, these are the conversations that I'm so excited to have here on the Black Wallet Show. Where do we go, George, for the information? Well, for anyone who's listening, if you want to get a financial education, um, I am co-chair of the Generational Wealth Alliance. Mm. Uh, we, uh, on Thursday, every Thursday at 7 p.m., uh, we have an hour, an hour and a half show on financial literacy, financial education, words of wisdom. Mm. Um, and if you're interested, if you're interested in that show, all you have to do is email me at gfraser at frasernet.com, gfraser, F-R-A-S-C-R, at frasernet.com. I will put you on the list. And when we send out the notifications every Thursday, if you're Excellent. serious, right, every Thursday, seven o'clock Eastern time, you can, it's free of charge. Uh, you'll get all the education that you want. Uh, it's weekly, so that's 52 times a year. Love if, that. in fact, you belong to a Black church, uh, I've developed what I call the Winds Wealth Building Centers and Curriculum. I it is a that. curriculum that George, could you put 200... that back up on camera one more time? I want to just have sure. our guys zoom in on that. Thank you so Wins. much. Winds. Love that acronym. Wealth. Winds. It's an acronym. It means wealth in the name of the divine savior. Mm. Winds Wealth Building Centers. Uh, I developed, it is a system for financial education and financial literacy. I spent $250,000 in a collaborative effort to develop our own financial literacy curriculum. Wow. It's 75 modules. We teach that as part of the Winds Wealth Building Center. So if you have a church family, uh, you can talk to your pastor about installing a Winds Wealth Building Center ministry in your church and as if uh, wednesday is uh, bible study day thursday should be financial literacy uh day in every black church in america there are eighty-five thousand black churches in america about ten thousand of them have wealth ministries but they do not have a beautifully designed 75 module curriculum and with uh, you know a teacher's plan uh, everything, everything that you need. It's a very, very, very low cost uh, to invest in it. And right. so you can do it in the church, fraternities, sororities, organizations. There are systems and we have a system. You must have a system. Everything Absolutely. is a system. So financial education has to be at the forefront. Why is this important? Because when you look at the most elite and, and some of the wealthiest people in the black community 60 percent of our nba players end up going broke within five years of retirement 70 percent of them of black folks that win the lottery right go right. broke right. within five years 75 percent of the nfl players go broke within two years so we really need to understand the four pillars for the intergenerational transfer of wealth and one of them is the proper management of accumulated wealth so that we can stop reading about these elite earners who blow all their money in four or five years that 
is the improper management of accumulated wealth. So financial literacy is critical. What's the first thing slaves did when they became free? They began building small classrooms um, and uh, small yep. classrooms, then small schools, then larger schools. And then within a hundred years, we had an entire system of, of uh, historically black colleges and cities. So everything begins with literacy. Our people perish for the lack of knowledge. So it says to us in the Bible, this is something we must do. And um, the trauma that Black people have gone through historically, right? The trauma that we have gone through historically is, 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 is really, if you think about it, our wounds are not our fault, but our healing is our responsibility. Let me say that a different way, a little bit more direct. Right. White people will not be saving black people. White people are not even thinking about black people. Do you know who white people are thinking about? They're thinking about white people. Exactly. They're thinking about their husbands, their wives, their children, their neighborhoods, their businesses. They're not thinking about you. They're thinking about them. Asians aren't thinking about you. Oh, uh, you know what, Mr. Them. Frazier, you are giving me goosebumps right now because these are the things, these are the topics that I want to talk to talk about on this show. Continue mm -hmm. on. We're talking about communities. We're, I just have to talk to my viewers. He's talking about the Asian communities, right? He didn't mention the Muslim communities as yet. They're worried about themselves, ladies and gentlemen, that are tuning in right now to the Black Wallet Talk Show. We are bringing key resources, experts experts to the show. I hope you guys are listening intently because he is dropping gems right now. He also, just a quick recap, he mentioned the church, the church where you persons go to, you guys tithe. For those of you that are in control of the church, he mentioned a phenomenal program, educate the people. It can't only be about the Bible, the verses, give the people content to help them. You know, let me let me just say let me just say this one thought. Yeah. Dr. Amos Wilson, if you don't know who Amos Wilson is, YouTube him and watch everything he left us before he died. Mm. And Dr. Amos Wilson said uh, 40 years ago that our refusal as black people to confront the issues of money and wealth is going to end up with our very lives being threatened as people on this earth, right? We must deal with this issue of money. There's a very, very, very interesting study that came out by the Institute of Policy Studies in 2018. Um, Google it, brothers and sisters, uh, read the study. And it fundamentally said this, that by 2053, just 10 years, after the country is projected to become majority non-white, black median families will own zero wealth if current trends continue. White families will own more than six figures. In other words, if we do not fix this by 2053, we will end up in a second slavery. Wow. Try to operate in a market-based economy in a democratic capitalistic society without money. You can't. That's a so fact. We have to do it. It is on us, us. And no one can fix this for us but us. us. So there are things that we have to follow, the things that we have to do. Um and, and things that we must prepare our children for, because what we're talking about, my dear is our children. Because everything we do, we do for our children, just as everything our parents did, they did for us. If right, our children right. cannot see the future, they will not pay the price. So we have to work on our financial education and financial literacy and doing the right thing by our money and investing our money so that we can model the behavior that we expect from our children. This is critical. So, Dr. Fraser, I'm going to ask myself a question. <laughs> um, what does every Black family need from a financial perspective? Just some simple list of things. Very simple. Every Black family should own land. Every Black family should have gold. Every Black family 
should be invested and involved in cryptocurrency. If you're uh, if you don't know about cryptocurrency and the potential of that, you're old yep. and you need to find yeah. out about it, right? Every black family should have life insurance. Every black family should have an LLC, lots of tax benefits of that. Every black family should have an investment account. Every black family should have stocks. Every black family should have a trust. Every black family should, damn it, have an established will. They're still fighting over James Brown's money, Aretha Franklin's money, and oh. Prince's money uh, because they did not leave a will. Who's going to end up with most of their money? The lawyers and the courts. Yeah. Yep. Right. Uh, I am tired of paying for GoFundMe burials. Right. Oh, we my goodness. I just lost some money. <laughs> it's so funny we that you even... mentioned that comedian's wife for crying out to the public for a GoFundMe page. That's a whole different conversation. But I'm glad you mentioned that, that we have to do better. We have to do right. better. We have to do better. It's on us. No one is going to fix us but us. Right. And Absolutely. we have to prepare and give our children assets. We have to start young. We have to start with our children. Yes. Many of us are just too old to learn this stuff. We Absolutely. start with our children. And I you think start you, at home. You hit it home with this, asking yourself the question, because that literally was my next question. What does the future for Black look like to you? Um, and you kind of nailed it with the educational piece, right? What are the pillars? Do you guys invest systematically, right? Or is the money still under the mattress? If you can drop us right now, uh, Mr. Frazier, with your vision for the Black future, what would it look like if all of these things that you mentioned are a green light and they're a go? What do you see happening in America today? I see us slipping into darkness to be, I, I just want to speak truth to power. Mm. that the wealth gap between blacks and whites has gotten wider oh, in gosh. the last 50 years. In the last 50 years, it has gotten bigger. Um, it is not that they're, they're, they're not black people earning substantial sums of money. It's mm -hmm. not that. As the old saying goes, it's not what you earn, it's what you keep. Mm -hmm. It's just that we are not keeping investing and strategizing how to leverage more effectively our collective resources and intellectual capital and financial capital. Other cultures are doing that. Other cultures recycle their dollars back into their own community, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so listen, Asian Americans solve their own unemployment problem in America by opening small Chinese restaurants in the hood. Yep. In urban neighborhoods. In fact, if you go into a Chinese restaurant and there are four brothers waiting on you, leave. That's not a real Asian restaurant because Asian people do not employ Black people. They employ their own damn people. And you Absolutely. can't hate on them for that because that's exactly what we ought to be doing. So we have to man up and woman up. We have to educate ourselves. We're not going to get there unless we educate ourselves, right? It all begins with education. When your child turns five, you send them into a system of education so that they can learn some things and they can habitualize some things. So we have to do this. We have to read. There's an old saying, if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book, right? Read yeah. at least one book a month. The average American only reads one book a year. If you wow. read one book a month in five years, you will have read 60 books. The average American will have only read five books. Read, brothers and sisters. Everything you want to know about any damn thing is in a book. I'm in my office. I'm not in my home. You see what's behind me. Yep. 1,500 books are in my office. 15,000 books are in my home. Wow. I read 100 books a year, minimally. Mm. Okay. So you can do, if I can do it, you can do it. Where did I get this knowledge? I didn't make it up. I read it. I internalized it. I habitualized it. I practiced, practiced this. So this is why I'm sitting here as a 77-year-old elder OG 
speaking right. into you and trying to give you the single tips and or, or a couple of tips on what you need to do to change your financial trajectory and the financial trajectory of multiple generations of your family. This Absolutely. is critically important. We have to fix it and we are going backwards. We're going backwards. Oh man, it, it, I need to have you back on this show because I know we're running out of time, Mr. Frazier. I want to thank you so much for taking this time out to educate our viewers on the Black Wallet Show. This is not the last of you, right? God willing that you will come back and empower us once again. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it locked here on the Black Wallet Show, where our goal is to empower, to inspire, and to bring experts to the table. Until next time, thank you. And Mr. Frazier, thank you. I am hugging you through this screen. God bless you, King. Wishing you many more enlightenment for our community. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.